So what if I told you sharks are far from the only apex predator you should be worrying about every time you go to the beach? That is because in recent years, more and more crocodilian species have been being found all the way out in the open ocean and along the coast. And it's not just the two main culprits, the American and the saltwater crocodile, which are known for occasionally going out to sea. It's other species too, and they're getting closer and closer to our beaches even more and more often. So why is this happening? And what sorts of crazy events are occurring when these crocodiles decide to go out to sea? Let's find out. Saltwater crocodiles are the largest crocodiles in the world. They have evolved specifically to be able to travel long distance in the ocean. A surprise appearance on a Bali beach. The three meter reptile was spotted by lifeguards and was initially believed to be a piece of wood. We're gonna take a look. That is an alligator. Long and she is considered healthy. Good looking croc right there. Still not clear where she came from though. And tonight we're told that it's been released into a more suitable Habitat. I guess the beach is saltwater crocodile basically has nothing it really has to worry about but other saltwater crocodiles. So yes, believe it or not, there are multiple different species of crocodilian known for going straight out to sea on a somewhat regular basis, some of which have been recorded traveling over a hundred miles in the search of new territory. So if you thought these crocodiles were lazy, you're definitely wrong. But to start, despite most crocodilian species having been recorded in the ocean at least once, there are only two species that have fully been adapted for traveling across open water. Those being the American crocodile, Crocodilus acutus, and the saltwater crocodile, Crocodilus porosus. Both of which have evolved salt glands separately from each other and are known for traveling hundreds of miles across the coast and even inland in the search of new territory and food. With one individual in Australia even having been recorded traveling 370 miles along the Australian coastline in only 25 days in the search for new territory. With the main reason they are able to cover so much ground in such little time being the fact that some of these crocodiles, particularly the saltwater crocodiles, have learned to use the ocean currents towards their advantage. In some cases, simply just resting in open water and having the currents take them to where they want to go. In a lot of ways, these ocean currents act as a sort of super highway for apex predators of the marine world. And not just crocodiles either. This can often lead to crocodiles, especially the saltwater crocodile, getting into conflicts with all sorts of other marine predators, particularly sharks. As combat and predation between the two groups has been recorded multiple times over the years, both in open water and along Australia's coastline. Some of these crocodiles have even used the ocean currents towards their advantage in creating a sort of semi-unofficial migration pattern, where they'll travel to specific islands off the Australian coast in order to prey on the nesting sea turtles, only to return later back to their original homes on the mainland. In the process though, these crocodiles will do the usual, that being shutting down beaches, terrorizing beachgoers, and harassing the other marine life in the process. Yeah, let's just say the saltwater crocodile can be pretty mischievous, but also quite dangerous. And while the American crocodile is much less of a threat to people, they've also been known for terrorizing beachgoers on a somewhat regular basis. Similar to the saltwater crocodile, the American crocodile has an incredibly sparse range, ranging all the way from South Florida to most of the Caribbean and even deep into South America. And because of their sparse range, particularly in the Caribbean, these crocodiles are often forced to travel back and forth between islands, primarily in order to find a mate and find suitable habitat that isn't overpopulated. Females also need to travel long distances in order to find freshwater resources which might not be present on certain islands due to the fact that baby crocodiles do not have their salt glands developed when they're born. With the American crocodile in particular having a pretty bad habit of living in hypersaline environments where reproduction simply isn't practical. And for this reason, these crocodiles have been recorded swimming all the way from Cuba to the Florida Keys and even in a few cases being found all the way in the Bahamas going back and forth, though these crocodiles currently do not breed there. Heck, while footage is incredibly rare, there's even been a few reports of these crocodiles being found all the way out in the open ocean, with one case of one even again stranded all the way in South Carolina, likely trying to swim out of South Florida, 
but due to a hurricane getting stranded way outside of its normal range. Very similarly, saltwater crocodiles have been found stranded all the way up in Okinawa, far outside of their regular range too. Meaning that the saltwater crocodile might actually be the original inspiration for the Japanese dragon. And one other thing both of these species have in common beyond their dragon-like appearance is that they both like going out of their way to travel into the ocean in order to feed. As mentioned before, these crocodiles will often eat sea turtles and even sharks, but they also love to eat a lot of the smaller fish in their native ranges. And by spending more time in the ocean, these two crocodilian species, despite being the largest ones in their range, actually help to avoid competition with other smaller, but possibly more prevalent species that might be found further inland. But that doesn't mean some of these freshwater species don't go out to saltwater and even ocean habitats occasionally. With the American alligator, despite notoriously being referred to as a freshwater species, seemingly having the most reports of them going into saltwater habitats and even being found far out into the open ocean. With there even being one case where an American alligator was reported near an oil rig 70 miles offshore into the Gulf of the... Wait, what is called Gulf of America now? Regardless though, despite their lack of salt glands, the American alligator could survive being in saltwater habitats for at least a few days on end, and because of that they have been found on the occasion to be hanging out in saltwater habitats, including the ocean. In some areas, they are even somewhat common in brackish water mangrove habitats, where they fill in a similar niche to the American crocodile in South Florida though they simply can't spend too much time exclusively in these braggish and saltwater habitats without having to return to fresh water. As yes, believe it or not, alligators can and do drink the same way we do. And because of their lack of salt glands, they haven't been found traveling throughout ocean currents or purposely going into the open ocean the way some crocodiles have, but they still have more than enough of a tolerance to salt water to where they are able to travel from island to island in the Florida Keys, and they've even been reported traveling all the way out to Florida's barrier reef in order to hunt, likely for sea turtles or possibly sharks. So next time you're in the intercoastal of Florida just hanging out, just remember there could also be an alligator underneath your boat. And in the case of South Florida, it could be an alligator or a crocodile. But the American alligator isn't the only freshwater species which occasionally ventures into salt water. Its close relative, the black caiman, also occasionally does the same, particularly in French Guiana, where they often enter and spend a large portion of their time in brackish water swamps. And because of their proximity to the ocean, they do occasionally venture out into the ocean for the same reasons as the American alligator. And when these caimans eventually return, as they don't entirely know how to navigate the ocean, and also because they don't exactly care about borders, they oftentimes don't go straight back into the brackish water swamps and rivers in which they came, but instead end up straight onto French Guiana's beaches, where people often try to sun themselves. And this leads to some very interesting human wildlife conflicts. Events like this seem to happen quite often with larger crocodilian species, with even ornico crocodiles having also been reported traveling into fringe habitat and eventually getting blown far out outside of their native range because of storms and ending up in the ocean, where they either return or die having dehydrated out at sea. Still, some freshwater species have been able to successfully navigate the ocean in order to expand their range, particularly the Cuban crocodile back in the day, which once ranged across the Caribbean thanks to their ability to travel across ocean currents. The same likely applies to the Tumistuma of Southeast Asia, though more research into this crocodilian needs to be done in order to figure out if that's actually how they expanded their range. Regardless though, I'd love to talk more about Tumistumas in a future video. So if you want to hear me talk about those guys, then feel free to like and subscribe. Like, come on, at least give me 1k. Now getting back on track, there is one crocodilian in particular, which despite being a freshwater species, does seem to be by far the most adapted for saltwater out of any crocodilian besides the American and saltwater crocodile. And despite not being a saltwater species, this crocodilian has also been recorded traveling over 100 miles across the open ocean in the search for new territory. So what is this species? It's the Nile crocodile. 
In addition to the Nile crocodile being one of the most abundant and iconic crocodilian species, the Nile crocodile, despite primarily living in freshwater habitats, also seems to have vestigial salt glands, which while not as efficient as the American or saltwater crocodile, do still seem to be effective enough to where the Nile crocodile could spend multiple days on end easily in an entirely saltwater environment which they do somewhat regularly around some of Africa's brackish water estuaries, where they actually end up preying on bull sharks the same way the American and saltwater crocodiles do. With this event across the world having become so common that the bull sharks have evolved in order to detect and actually avoid crocodilian scent. Still, unlike the American and the true saltwater crocodile, the Nile crocodiles don't exactly seem to enjoy traveling back and forth from island to island, as they still aren't entirely adapted for a saltwater lifestyle, but instead seem to prefer freshwater and a terrestrial prey. Regardless though, thanks to the aid of ocean currents, the Nile crocodile has been able to spread all the way from the African mainland to Madagascar, where they would eventually outcompete the Voye and become the dominant crocodile species on the island of Madagascar. So even though the vast majority of the Nile crocodile population lives far away from the coast, the Nile crocodile's ability to tolerate saltwater to some degree has still aided the species in being able to spread and successfully survive long periods of time out in the open ocean. It should be kept in mind too that the handful of species that I've mentioned aren't the only species to have ever been recorded out in the ocean. The vast majority of coastal crocodilians, regardless of family or size, have been found in saltwater environments and the open ocean at some point or another, though it seems like it's mostly the larger species that tend to actually travel, using ocean currents to get from point A to point B. But still, there's just so much about these crocodilians that we're still learning about right now. And maybe there's another entirely unique saltwater species just waiting to be discovered. Now, if you want to learn about more secrets about crocodilians or the many other unique groups of animals that the world has to offer, then please feel free to like and subscribe, and hopefully I can make that to Mistima video real soon.